Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're listening on Spotify, welcome back to my podcast. So this is our 10th episode and we have a very special topic for today which is Doctor to the Barrio. So maraming nag-request sa inyo nito. But before that, let me introduce myself again dun sa mga bago subscribers. So my name is Doc Rome. I'm a urologist in the Philippines and I do vlogs all about medicine and my life as a doctor. And in this podcast, we usually talk about careers in medicine such as your pre-med, your med school, the specialties you can take, and also some points on how to build a career in medicine. And also like this one, the doctor to the barrio. So again, thank you everyone for those who are listening and nakasubscribe sa channel ko. And especially now, we already have 5,000 followers. So can you imagine that? Eh, less than 100 lang ngayon. 5,000 na. So I'm very happy and I'm very thankful for you guys. Sa lahat na nakikinig, kahit hindi nakasubscribe, it's okay for as long as you're enjoying yung podcast. Kaya natin ito ginagawa. Medyo minsan, matagal lang ako mag-post kasi medyo busy rin with life and my job, of course. So kung wala din naman yung day life, day job ko, hindi ko rin naman magagawa itong YouTube. And again, before I introduce our speaker, I just want to make a shout out to our first Olympic gold medalist, Heidi Lynn Diaz. So um, I learned a lot from her journey also. No? Kasi medyo parehas din sa amin. It just goes to show na it takes time. Everything, your gold medals or your journey to medicine. Kung like in my case, uh, mag exam ako in, uh, to be a diplomat. So that would take time and effort, hindi siya agad-agad. So, pinaghahandaan lang talaga siya. So, I just want to get an inspiration from her since nagawa nga niya yun. Although low profile siya before, nakita na natin yung journey niya to become an Olympic gold medalist. So, matagal. It took a long time. So, like us doctors, ganun din. Of course, hindi naman mabilis talaga maging doctor. So, like in our case, Four years pre-med, four to five years med school, internship, residency, in my case, two years general surgery, and four years urology. So it doesn't stop there yung pag-aaral natin tuloy-tuloy. So I hope you find inspiration in her also. So like me, until now, I'm looking for inspiration, lalo na sa mga ganun. Kasi nga, mag exam ako for my diplomat exam. At the same time, I'm practicing. So with that aside, I want to introduce you to our guest for today, which is my a friend of mine from FEU. I met her during residency. So when I was the clerk's monitor, intern ko siya nun, or clerk siya nung time na yun. And then she proceeded to go into the doctor to the barrios program. So we're gonna talk about that. So marami kong questions for her, kung ano yung doctor to the barrios, how to get in, what inspired her to be in the doctor to the barrio. So I'm sure marami-rami tayong matututunan sa kanya. So let's get right into the topic and let's talk to Dr. Paige Reka. <laughs> okay, so hi, Dr. Uh, Paige Reka. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> hi, Dr. Rome. Long time no see. <laughs> yes, welcome to my podcast. So this is the 11th episode. So in this podcast, ang reach talaga natin ay mga aspiring doctors. So marami tayong questions about Dr. To The Barrio. So you're the perfect person to be guested and enlighten us all kung ano nga ba yung Dr. To The Barrio. So, but before that, introduce yourself. Hi to all uh, Doc Rome's uh, viewers and listeners sa podcast niya and sa YouTube channel. My name is uh, Paige Recasata. I am currently, well, I was a former Dr. To The Barrio. I served in Sulu from January 2019 to January 2021. I graduated from Far Eastern University sa FEU NRMF. And then, nag-internship ako sa Amang Rodriguez in Marikina. Yung goal ko talaga was to join MSF, yung Doctors Without Borders. Um, dream ko naman talaga maging doctor ever since I was a kid. But, you know, the idea of traveling and serving the, you know, less fortunate always appealed to me. Kaya lang, parang nung clerkship, dun ko lang kasi nalaman yung existence ng Dr. Tito Barrios. Partly, bakit late ko rin nalaman? Kasi hindi masyadong emphasized yung public health in our med school. And I think ganun din sa ibang mga med school. Eh. Parang few med schools really emphasize on public health. So yun, nung clerkship, nalaman ko, meron palang local version ng Doctors Without Borders, which is yung Dr. Tito Barrios. And yun, parang naging goal ko na talaga to join that after, um, after passing the boards. 
So what exactly is Dr. to the Barrios page? So the Doctor to the Barrios program, it's a program that was initiated by um, former DOH Secretary Juan Flavier, the OG DTTB. Um, na-developed siya noong early 90s. So nagkaroon kasi ng survey way back then na there are like a hun- parang more than 100 siguro, siguro 200 plus municipalities nun without a doctor for more than five years na. So they they started that program to deploy interested doctors to those far-flung areas para magkaroon sila ng doctor yun. So up until now, marami pa rin talagang municipalities without a doctor. Yung sa akin, the municipality siguro na-establish for 40 years. The whole time, wala talaga silang doctor nun. So first time nila magkaroon ng doctor when I was deployed there noong 2019. So since 90 ilang ano na yun ilang parang ka-age ko siguro yung program eh. So mga my god 30 years na rin yung DTTV program. <laughs> age reveal. <laughs> Yan. <laughs> and baka hindi na nila kilala si Senator Juan Flavier. <laughs> yeah, I know. Pero one of the best siguro sa the OH secretaries yan. Okay, so my next question is um, for those who want to apply, of course. So how do you apply? What are the requirements? Uh, what do they have to go through? Because before tayo nag-usap kanina, ang tingin ko sa kanya, para rin palang residency, especially kung saan mo gusto pumunta or kung ilan right. yung matatanggap. So can we go through all that, yung application process and the requirements? First of all, you have to pass the PLE first. Um, when I was uh, managing pa the DTTB Facebook page, we got a lot of inquiries from pre-med students or med students uh, about joining the program. I think akala nila, I mean for some, akala nila it's, it's an immersion program or an internship program for experience na, you know, you can volunteer kahit anong age mo or kahit anong status mo pa in med. But actually, you have to be a doctor first. As in, an actual doctor. So you have to pass the boards first. And then, kung interested ka, the applications for DT- DTTV kasi, once a year lang siya. So usually, at by the end of the year, mga bare months siya. Tapos, the usual na requirements na you would you would pass as a government employee, like yung personal data sheet mo, uh, work experience, uh, you also have to pass a letter to the director ng CHD in DOH. Um, what else? There is an exam and also an interview before you get in. Once na matanggap ka as DTTBs, hindi kasi nila ipapakita agad yung list ng mga areas na available for deployment. So, nung time namin, yung batch namin, during the orientation, uh, we had to choose muna kung ano yung uh, region na gusto namin iserve. So, for example, ako, ang pinili ko was Region 6. Pero hindi pa namin alam kung ilan yung available for Region 6. So, nung nilabas yung list, parang mas madami yung tao na pumili ng Region 6 than the available areas. So, a lot of us had to, you know, change or yung switch na yung choice namin. Tapos, parang ang ano pa dun, ang, yun nga, ang labanan dun, kailangan um, una sa lahat, taga doon ka ba or malapit ka ba doon so kunwari ako since laking Manila ko medyo talo na ako doon agad tapos dapat alam mo yung language so kung hindi ko rin ako since laking Manila ko hindi ko rin alam yung language sa region 6 di ba tapos kung may family ka doon and ako kasi yung family ko yung province ng mom ko sa Ilocos yun. I, I, I didn't want to um, apply talaga. Parang sinadya ko yun na hindi mag-apply sa Luzon. Parang medyo a little far away from home naman yung mapili ko na area. And then, parang maraming rounds yun eh. May round 2, may round 3. Tapos ganun talaga yung labanan, labanan ninyo. So, since wala ko talagang address in any of the provinces, parang ang natira na lang na areas eventually sa BARM, which is yung Bangsamoro, yeah. autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. And that, as in yung Mindanao mismo, it's a very unfamiliar place to me. I've never even been to Davao before that. So, what stuck sa uta ko kasi nung time na yun, kasi ang daming nag, actually, medyo madaming, madaming nag-back out na eh sa program nung yun na lang yung natira. Siyempre, yung mga magulang nila and sila mismo, they knew the dangers of that region. Parang, I, I'm not sure, kasi nung nag-talk kami before, Parang yung mga 
pre-med students, hindi sila familiar sa mga Abu Sayyaf. Ganun. Walang masyadong nagtanong about, about it, tanong eh, ako. So I don't, I don't know if your viewers, if they're still familiar with that. So may mga rebel groups pa doon, um, MILF, MNLF, and Abu Sayyaf. So syempre, yung mga parents ng mga batchmates namin and sila mismo, medyo, nag, medyo alanganin na. But ni kasi, parang isa sa mga tanong doon sa interview namin noon was, kahit anong area ba, kung saan ka ma-assign, okay lang sa'yo. And of course, I answered yes para matanggap ako sa DTTB. But then, you know, I think that was the whole point naman talaga eh, of, you know, joining the program. Na kahit saan, yung purpose mo naman kasi talaga doon is to serve the underserved. For me, I'm not, I'm not demonizing those who didn't ano, continue with the program. But to me kasi, parang that was the whole point of me joining eh. So, yan, napunta ako sa Sulu. <laughs> in a in an island municipality. Yeah, ang ganda din ng sinabi mo since lahat ng may purpose, no. Parang ito yung more extensive purpose kasi nga you're you're serving the underprivileged. Actually, one of the talks that I had also yung mga military doctors. And syempre, our friends din na military doctors. So, same din naman sa kanila, yung reach nila is yung holo, but this one different. Yeah, yeah, yeah mas focus talaga kayo literally to the barriers and all that. So, Paige, for those that uh, want to go in the program, so may lock-in period ba to? Is this a contract for one year? Can you extend? Can you stop in the middle? Paano yung uh, contract ni Jen? During uh, my time, wow, ang tagal. Ang tanda ko na. Nung 20, kasi bago na ngayon eh. So, nung kami, kami yung last batch na two-year contract siya talaga. But yung batch after namin, until siguro in the future na rin, three-year contract na siya. Hindi naman problem kung gusto mong mag-quit in the middle eh. But then kasi, uh, this comes with a scholarship to ano, UP Manila. Yeah, so you, may, meron din, din kaming ano, eh, classes for your master's in public health. So if you finish that, syempre, tas you pass, graduate ka, you get, you get an additional degree. I'm not sure about the details of that. I think kasi if you quit in the middle, you have to pay for the for the tuition. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not even sure if I I can say that. <laughs> Pero pa, parang parang ganun ata. Mm, yun. So ngayon kasi 3 year contract siya. I think meron din silang option ngayon yung mga DTTBs ngayon to go into FAMMED. So parang habang DTTB ka, pwede kang maging FAMED resident, I think. But during during my time nun, um, two-year contract siya, tapos may kasama kang master's in public health under UP Manila. Tapos, you can extend, pero kakausapin mo both DOH and the LGU that you serve para magkaroon ng usapan na. Kasi minsan, yeah, I, I have a lot of batchmates na nagpa-absorb na sila sa LGU nila. So, doon na talaga sila. So, parang residency din pala siya, no? So, pwede kang umalis anytime oh, okay. pwede kang mag-extend if you want. So, my next question is, this is very yeah. relevant, lalo na so, sa atin. How much is the pay? So, oh you get compensations for <laughs> doing this? Well, the pay kasi, um, I think, yun yung medyo parang appealing dun sa DTTB. Yun yung isa sa mga perks. Kasi salary grade 24 siya. So, that's around 80 plus gross, I think. And then, aside from that, syempre yung benefits ng Magna Carta for healthcare workers, meron din. So, automatic na yun na yung PhilHealth na nalalagyan. What's the, ano for GSIS ba yung sa atin kapag uh, government? Yeah, GSIS. Yeah. yeah. Counterpart yata. Ng- so, nalalagyan. And then, um, depending on the area that you serve, um, you can also get um, allowance or an honorarium from your LGU. So, not less than 10,000 yun. So, marami akong batchmates na yung honorarium nila medyo close dun sa salary nila. So, medyo parang double-double du- ganyan. But it, it really depends kasi. So, you know, may politics din kasi na involved dyan. Pero yun nga, lana kung kunwari single ka pa, wala kang pinipay na bills uh, or hindi ka pa nag-help out sa bills at home, makakasave ka talaga. I had a, I had a lot of batchmates na nakabili na ng car the first year pa lang. <laughs> okay, sana all. <laughs> Pero yeah, you, you can see, yun yung one of the perks ng DTTB. But you know, don't do it just for the money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so tell us, how's your day like? Like, 
uh, may duty ba, clinics, or paano ba? Actually, next question ko kung gusto mo na rin is ingat, yung work-life balance. So, what's your day like? Lalo na kung na-deploy ka, or kung clinic ka lang ba, or ano bang extent nung uh, doctor to the barrios? Okay, so, uh, as a DTTB kasi, you're either, as, uh, you're either assigned as a uh, regular na RHP, rural health physician, or the MHO, or yung municipal health officer. So as the MHO kasi, meron kang admin work with your clinics. For the RHPs kasi, since meron silang MHO, yung MHO yung admin nila. Um, depende rin kasi yun sa, sa population nung area kung saan ka na-assign. Um, there were some batchmates na RHP because nag-apply yung LGU nila to get the DTTBs. Pwede kasi yan eh. The LGU applies to um, parang request for DTTBs to serve as RHPs. Pero yung sa akin kasi, um, island siya. Never sila nagkaroon ng doctor. So I was the first doctor and the first MHO there. Mm. So, yeah. So yung organizational chart namin, MHO and then yung mga public health nurses and the midwives under me. Tapos, in a, on a normal day, um, typical parang outpatient lang. So 8 to 5, we see patients who come in sa clinics. Um, pero mas marami yung times na nag house to house kami because yung area na sinaserve ko, wala siyang roads. So, mahirap mag-travel if you're a resident there. So, what we do, ah, kunwari, Monday, sa ganitong barangay tayo pupunta, ganyan. Tapos Tuesday, ganito. Th- Wednesday, dito lang tayo sa rural health unit, ganyan. As a DTTB, marami rin per- pre-pandemic, marami rin siyang perks in terms of trainings and seminars. Noong first year ko doon, napapadala pa kami sa Davao, sa Zamboanga, to attend yung mga training. So, syempre, may mga, pag may free time kami, nakakalakwat siya kami as tourists doon sa mga areas. Pero yun nga, noong nag-pandemic na, syempre, hindi, bawal naman kami lumabas. So, that was actually a difficult time then. I mean, I, it, it's a difficult, it was a difficult time for everyone. But for us, DTTVs kasi, we were stuck in our areas. Kasi, pag may master's ka, usually, fly out kami ulit pabalik ng Manila to attend classes every two to three months. Tapos, one month kami sa Manila, and then babalik ulit sa mga areas. But nung pandemic, hindi na namin nagawa yun. So, even our classes, online lang. So, yeah, yun. <laughs> Work-life balance, I guess, holo isn't really that developed yet eh. Siguro ang pinaka, walang, walang, ano dun eh, walang, walang fast food dun. Ang pinaka mainstream lang na kainan doon Infinity tsaka yung Belgian waffles. The rest mga family owned na cafes ganyan. So um kapag hindi ako makalabas ng island, pag weekends, we try to get together yung commit and yung rural health unit na staff. Since 'di ba white sand yung beaches doon. I I'm not sure if you you saw my stories nung DTTV pa ako eh, pero I do, I do. Yeah, magbi-beach ka. <laughs> yeah, magbi-beach ka ba ganyan. Uh that's ang, ang okay kasi doon, parang fresh lahat ng seafood mo, ganyan. Um, pero if may time akong pumunta ng mainland, which is yung holo, and meet up with the other DTTBs na assigned din sa Sulu, yun, we try to get together siguro mga once or twice a month kapag meron kaming free time or pag meron kaming mga seminar sa holo mismo. I know it's pretty parang simple lang, pero... Yeah. Parang sila na rin yung stress relievers ko eh. Yeah. Kasi wala eh. I mean, what, there's no, there are no malls. There, yeah. Walang mga mga ganun. Saan ka nakatira? Yeah. Saan ka, ano yung living condition? Saan ka pinapatira? You have quarters? Um, not, not sa, ano kasi, yung barangay where I, where, where I stay at. Yun yung parang, how do you call it pag nandun yung municipal hall? Parang yun yung, yun yung baluarte ng mayor eh. But hindi yun yung main na rural health unit. So we have to travel to the RHU pa sa kabilang barangay. But where I stay, hindi ka ako sa mismong health center. Eh. They provided, parang, I don't know if you saw it, pero ano siya, uh, di, ba yung, di ba yung C, tapos may dock doon. Tapos parang may mga, mga houses doon. So parang room lang siya. Do, doon, ako, doon ako nagstay. So, so pag lalabas ako, titin ako yung window. As in talagang C talaga yung labas ko. Yeah. <laughs> Yun. Tapos, walang CR doon. So, I have to run to the, ano, to the barangay health station if I need to use the washroom. Kasi nga, seeing nga lang doon ito. So, yun. Siyempre, ayaw naman natin na doon tayo sa ano, mag-CR, di ba? 
what what are the challenges that you had to face? So since sinabi mo nga yung mga ganun, yung sa CR for example, right. ano yung mga challenges and ano yung mga natutunan mo with regards sa sa, sa ginawa mo dun sa uh, right. Doctor to the Barrio? So anong na-challenge ka talaga na masasabi mo na I did this? Based on my experience, because syempre iba-iba kami ng experiences eh. For me kasi, you know, being the first MHO, um, and be, being someone without ano, uh, background sa public health, kasi nga, hindi naman siya tinuturo dun, nung med school, di ba? The closest experience I had to public health was rotating in government hospitals. Pero it's still different eh, when you're immersing yourself doon mismo sa community. Siguro number one challenge ko talaga was um, adjusting to their culture. Kasi sa akin, syempre Sulu, it's a Muslim, it's an Islamic community. So aside from a difference in religion, um, it's a patriarchal community. Tapos super, super duper close ties nila sa, sa culture nila eh. So yung mga, yung mga tipong part ng culture nila yung smoking, for example, it was difficult to just, you know, you can just simply tell them na parang, ah, masama yung smoking na yan, stop it. Nagkakasakit yung anak mo, nagkaka, nagkaka-rhinitis yung anak mo because of that. You can just tell them na ganun, kasimple. And I think that's a challenge din naman for other DTTVs, yung behavioral change ng tao. Um, aside from that, with ano with pregnant yung mga mothers pregnant mothers mga anak ah, minsan mas gusto talaga nila sa bahay eh alam naman natin doon ah, ah, yeah. hindi siya as ah, hindi ba i mean hindi siya hindi siya yung ideal na environment to to deliver a baby what else i had to learn the language mm. kasi ang language nila doon tausog um bihira sila magtagalog doon lalo na doon, doon sa island mismo uh, the municipality where i where I was assigned to. Kasi doon, parang, yung mga nagtatagalog, yung mga nakapag-school, tsaka yung mga mas bata na, yung mga naka-expose na sa, you know, sa, sa mainland. Pero, syempre, I have a lot of adult and yung mga elderly din na patients. And they all speak Tausug lang talaga. So, I didn't want to rely on the staff to always be my ano interpreter. So, I, had to, I, I learned the language then. <laughs> Um, what else? Yun, I had to be mindful about their culture. Kasi may, 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 mga, may mga habits sila na parang alam mong hindi siya hygienic or alam mong iba dun sa kinalakihan mo, you know. I mean, it was a less comfortable lifestyle compared to how I, I was brought up here in Manila. Pero yung mga ganun naman, I expected it. Ang siguro, ang medyo pinaka yung pinakamahirap din siguro na part is yung politics. Kasi, you know, as the MHO, I always had to deal with the mayor, the vice mayor, and, you know, hindi naman laging health ang priority nila. So, when you want to propose uh, a project that involves, yun nga, um, better health outcomes, minsan kasi feeling nila parang kapag health, ikaw lang, parang sa'yo lang yan. But, you know, syempre, kailangan pa rin ng convincing powers ng mayor. Kailangan pa rin ng... I had to always work with the police also. Kasi mas nakikinig sila sa police or sa taong may baril <laughs> kaysa sa'yo. Syempre, ako, dayo ako, di ba? Parang, sino ba to, di ba? Babae na nga, tapos um, Catholic, tapos hindi naman taga dito, bulol-bulol pa yung tausog, di ba? Parang, sino ka, di ba? Who are you to tell us what to do? Parang ganun kasi na-feel ko like most of the time. And I, I think na hindi enough yung two years eh to, you know, okay. if you really, ano ba yung, ano namin, want to make a change yung ganyan. It, two years isn't enough talaga. Kaya siguro yung selection nila, mas bias kung tiga dun ka, kung nagsasalita ka ng language. Nila. Yeah. Yung mga exactly. you know, very eye-opening sa akin kasi narinig ko lang siya eh. Pero now first hand, uh-huh. narinig ko sa kasi yung experience. Actually, you're my first friend who went to the doctor to the barrio. So this is... Ah, really? So as, as much as narinig namin sila, ngayon ko lang talaga narinig and having this question so in my head. So thank you for that. So ngayon medyo maganda yung next question ko. Nasabi mo na din yung iba. Like kung sa akin, perks talaga yung... Nasa beach, masarap yung seafood kung nakabili ng kotse. So, yun yung feldo. So, those are the perks. Ano pa yung mga hindi mo nasabing perks? 
uh, makukonvince mo yung mga viewers na mag-doctor to the barrios or at least perks that you enjoy? Well, sa akin, again, based on my personal experience, um, yun nga, sobrang, okay, sa island kasi, parang, syempre, di ba, bagong huli mga isda every morning. Tapos yung isang, I don't know what they call it, eh, pero yung mas malaki pa sa tabo na malaki, tapos puro tamban, tamban yung tawag nila eh, parang maliit na, Uod. maliit na galunggong. Ah, okay. Parang ganon, yung ganon kadami, parang 20 pesos lang. Okay, so cheap yung living dun. Tapos, it wasn't difficult uh, for me to wake up early. Parang hindi ko nga kailangan alarm eh. Kasi I, so since south na yung Sulu, ba? Tapos yung municipality ko, south pa siya ng Sulu talaga. So southern part siya ng Sulu. Malapit na kami sa Malaysia actually. And Tawi-Tawi. Yung barangay din, southern part din ng island. So I really had both yung sunrise and sunset. As in, makikita ko siya both. Mamawatch ko siya both. So, I, I, I'm sure parang if, if mi, minsan nakikita mo parang, oy nag-sunset na naman si Paige, ganyan, ganyan. <laughs> Kasi pinopost ko siya lagi sa stories eh. Pero yeah, parang nagigising ako umaga, tapos yun yung stress reliever ko sa umaga para, ay, okay, sunrise. Tapos, sa kabila, sunset agad after after work. Um, what else? Um, definitely it's an eye-opener. For me, kasi exposing yourself to different cultures, for me, it's it's an advantage. Kasi you get to experience something different na, you know, you you understand people better eh. When you you immerse yourself in their culture, ganyan, para, ah, kaya pala ganito kasi yun yung practice nila. Of course, the bonds that you create with the people, syempre, naging ka-close yung mga barangay captain doon, um, yung staff, and of course, the opportunity to to serve the underserved. Kasi sa atin, lalo na diba, sa Manila, parang a lot of us kasi after boards, residency agad. So parang wala na tayong, wala na tayong opportunity to really expose ourselves to what the public health system is like in the Philippines. Kasi parang yung hospitals, small percent lang yan kung ano talaga, diba? Kung ano talaga yung, kung paano yung public health sa Pilip, buong Pilipinas. Yan. Yeah, and, uh, coming, it's an eye opener. Coming from a government hospital, napakaliit lang talaga yung nakikita namin. Actually, ang intindi ko nga dun sa mga kwento mo kanina, parang ikaw yung technically medical director ng island mo eh. Kasi ikaw lang yung in charge doon, ikaw yung kumakausap sa administration. Kind of. <laughs> parang pag parang in a hospital setting, oh, ikaw yung medical director. Kasi ikaw talaga pagdating sa health, ikaw eh. Now, ito yung uh, challenge ko naman sa'yo. Try to convince us. Oh. I'm sure yung mga... Oh, no! <laughs> Doon sa sunrise and sunset, very convincing na yun. And I'm sure yung mga ibang counterparts mo sa ibang barrio, I'm sure meron din silang mga sariling perks nila na nai-enjoy. So, can you try to convince us, aside dun, kasi baka yung iba, ayaw naman dun sa beach. So, try to convince us na mag-doctor to the barrios. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'll start with this muna. You know, uh, I want to thank you again for this opportunity for me to share in my, my experiences. Pero, you know, Doc Rome, <laughs> um, interviewing just one DTTV isn't enough for a person to get a full grasp of what it's like to be um, a doctor to the barrios. Um Tsaka hindi, hindi mo siya, yun, you can also get a full grasp of what it's like to be in the community. Kasi hindi ka lang, hindi ka lang doctor dun eh. Like you're, you have to make yourself a part of that community. You have to understand. Kung baga sa atin, sa akin kasi parang yung public health, <laughs> dapat daladala mo siya kahit anong field mo eh. Kahit hindi public health yung path na kunin mo. Kung baga as doctors, it's not just about me healing your your disease eh. Tapos, we just call it a day. Parang after nun, pag magaling ka na, wala na. We also have to take note of what, ano ba yung mga cultural factors as to why this person gets that disease. Ano ba? <laughs> Baka maiyak ako eh. The joke lang. <laughs> Hindi. Um, uh, oh my gosh, how, how do I convince people? Do I want to? Joke. <laughs> Yun nga, um, <laughs> Siguro, I'm not going to try to convince people to join the actual program, but maybe just take a look. Just, yeah, or or you know, if you're a pre-med student or a med student or an aspiring DTDB, 
siguro, tapos parang feeling mo dito sa interview nito, parang ayaw ko nang mag TV. Siguro yung mismong scope lang ng public health, sana, madala mo kahit anong path yung kunin mo. Kasi it, it, it encompasses everything eh, yeah. public health. I don't know, I'm making sense. <laughs> I think what people should understand is being a doctor itself is service. And being yes. a doctor to the Barrios program, parang this is just a 10 times step up nung, yun nga, serving the underprivileged. So, right. hindi ka forget na sa hindi ka doctor to the Barrios, hindi ka na magserve eh. Parang this is just Uh-oh. a step up na ma-reach mo yung, yun nga, katulad na yung mga islands. Pero as a doctor, uh, kailangan accept mo na talaga na magsaservice ka to the poor. Hindi naman laging lahat ng patients may paying patients. Lahat right. ng, lagi kang tutulong. Hindi ka pwedeng tumanggi dahil walang pera. No, that's a no-no. Lagi, right. lagi mong, lagi mong i-reach yung hand mo dun sa mga underprivileged. Dahil responsibility natin yun as, like me, as a urologist. Hindi naman kami madami. So, bibigay ko yung service ko for free or at least I would refer them to somewhere na free, especially dun sa mga surgical cases na sa clinic ko lang nakikita. So, I think being in the doctor to the bar is based on what you're telling me then. Parang siguro eye-opener siya first and foremost dun sa public health system ng Philippines like what you said. So, kung gusto mo talaga to venture into that, Doctor to the Barrios is perfect for you. Well, yeah, kasi hindi lang hindi lang hindi lang clinics nga eh. So admin ka din. And then you have experience din in policy making. So kung meron kang gusto mong mga ordinances na uh, gawin, you re- syempre you have to convince din yung LGU mo. It's so parang hindi, hindi kulang ang isang buong araw to explain like what <laughs> what you do. Pero as in ano kasi talaga, like parang parang politician ka din in a way, but really I mean, yun. So, ha? Huh? Pag tumakbo ka, baka manalo ka. Oh my God! <laughs> well, actually, what we want as the TV is to, to, to impart dun sa mga, ano, sa mga aspiring din na DTTVs. First and foremost, you won't find glory here. A lot of us um, joined the program thinking na parang, ah, ano to, parang legacy or parang I will change the world through um, joining this. Pero if you if you if you're expecting like immediate results, then you're going to be disappointed. You know, alam din naman natin, you know, also Dr. Romy, being depicted as heroes, it's a it's a worn out and a narrative for us healthcare workers. Eh? Be idealistic when it comes to your goal in public health, but also be realistic. Na wag ka masyadong mag-expect ng immediate na changes sa behavior ng tao or with kasi you're always going to encounter different different kinds of people eh, here in just ko parang ilang beses siguro akong umiyak kasi hindi ko ma-convince yung si ganito si ganyan kasi ayaw nila yung program hindi nila magets yung point but yun nga what, like what i said kanina hindi enough na mag-interview ng isang DTTB to get the whole to get a full grasp but you know the goal that we all share is sana madala nga ng aspiring DTTBs, aspiring urologists, aspiring pathologists, yung, pub, yung scope ng public health wherever they go. I'm not gonna convince you to join the DTTB, but at least uh, be more aware of what public health is all about. Okay, so I'm sure madaming mga may gusto talaga niyan, kaya nga tayo lang dito. So any final message for them dun sa mga decided doon sa mga, siguro yung mga half-hearted din. Kasi I'm sure marami talagang may gusto nito Yun nga lang, may mga hindrance doon. Katulad nga yung sabi mo kanina, kung saan ka mag-deploy, ganyan. Pero I'm right. sure meron talagang mga people like you, people na nandito sa Manila na, uh, actually, ikaw yung perfect guest eh. Kasi tiga Manila ka, tapos hindi ka rin na, wala ka rin namang province. So parang you're a perfect example mm-hmm. doon sa bulk na, yung iba kasi gusto malapit sa kanila, ganyan. Pero ikaw right. yung... Um, by the way, in intro, isa, isa sa mga nag-welcome sa akin si Paige sa Marikina Living. So, <laughs> Oo nga. Any final message? Um, siguro for, for anyone who is interested or um, curious about the program, siguro start with reading about it, yung DTTB, and also 
while you're exposing yourself bit by bit sa public health and health in general, um, make health for all your advocacy until it becomes a reality here in our country. Yun lang. So, again, thank you, Paige. So, meron kong <laughs> promote na mga, uh, mga IG page or Twitter. Twitter. Ako? Yeah. Si- ah, oh my God, yung Twitter ko wag muna. So, yung Instagram ko, uh, it's uh, at page up reka. So that's P A I G E A P R E C A. Um parami yung ano doon. Actually tinanggal ko kasi yung highlights eh pero siguro I should I should ano I should put it up back again yung mga yung mga highlights ko ng DTTV experience ko. Tapos they can always message us naman any any one of us kung may mga kakilala din silang ibang DTTVs. Um about the program kasi yun nga eh, parang minsan kasi yung mga ganito, parang kulang, kulang talaga para ikwento yung experience. Tsaka yun, iba-iba kasi ka talaga yung mga experiences namin eh. Depende sa area. <laughs> okay, so thank you again, Paige. Sobrang nice catching up with you again. So sa mga nanonood, I'm sure na-appreciate nyo na. I'm sure marami kayong natutunan. And if meron pa kayong mga questions, yun nga yung handle ni, Twitter handle ni Paige. And also you can comment on my page. So I will try to answer uh, yung mga questions nyo. So, comment lang. Subscribe and share this to your friends. And kung gusto nyo yung mga contents na ganito, ring nyo na rin yung bell para um, update kayo kung meron akong bagong upload. So, medyo hinahinay lang. Medyo hindi naman hiatus, pero dahan-dahan lang muna ako sa pag-upload dahil busy din tayo. So, again, thank you again. Uh, bye to all of you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. bye.